Zodiac is a company with a long history of making watches. They were founded in 1882 and many of their vintage models are really prized by watch collectors. I think that many of their new offerings don't get much love from watch collectors because the brand pretty much died out in the 1980s following the quartz crisis. They came back in the early 2000s when they were purchased by the Fossil Group in 2001. Now say what you will about Fossil Group. A lot of people consider that Fossil is a fashion watch brand, that they're associated with cheaper watches that you would buy in shopping malls. But I feel that Fossil has really revived the Zodiac brand and now Zodiac is very much alive and kicking and producing some really, really cool watches. Most of their modern offerings are based on Zodiac's old catalogue. They're based on watches from the 1950s, the 60s and the 70s, which was very much the heyday of watch manufacturing at Zodiac. If I asked you to name the original dive watch, you might name the now iconic Rolex Submariner or possibly the blank pan 50 fathoms. And you'd be right either way, as both came out in the same year, 1953. But Zodiac produced the Seawolf that same year. And so Zodiac can also be considered to be one of the creators of the original dive watch. Sea wolves were used by military personnel, including the Navy SEAL teams, and were prized for their toughness. Zodiac is still producing the Sea Wolf today as a modern interpretation of the original. It's got COSC certified movements and up to 1,000 meter water resistance. Another iconic model that has been brought back by Zodiac is the Zodiac Astrographic. This is a really futuristic looking watch that was originally produced in 1969, very much at the height of the space age. And it has this really unusual rectangular shaped case. And if we look at the case from the side, you can also see it's got a sort of cushion shape to it. When you start to look at the dial and particularly the hands of this watch, you start to notice that something really unusual is going on. It has hour, minutes and seconds hands, just like any regular watch would. But the hands on this watch appear to be floating above the dial and they don't appear to be attached to the central pinion. If we look closely at that red seconds dot that's orbiting around the exterior perimeter of the dial, we can see that it's passing over the numerals, passing over the date window there, and it doesn't appear to be attached to the central pinion of the watch. So you begin to start wondering what the heck is moving that red dot around this dial? Is there some sort of magnetic system underneath the dial that's pulling it along? Is there some sort of mechanism around the perimeter of the dial that's pushing that red dot? What the heck is driving that red dot? This watch is therefore a mystery dial watch. Mystery dial watches are, are typically found at much higher price points. They're also typically found in dressier styled watches than this one. For example, the Cartier Raton de Cartier Mysterious or the Le Coultre Galaxy Mystery Dial. Some of these Mystery Dial watches would have hands mounted on transparent discs that rotate either by a geared mechanism around the circumference of the dial or a centrally mounted pinion. The Astrographic does the Mystery Dial in a relatively simple way. Each of the hour, minute and seconds hands are mounted or applied to transparent discs. And each rotates from the central pinion just as regular hands would. Zodiac have masked the central pinion with an applied metallic logo, just to complete the mystery dial illusion. But if we begin to tilt the watch and we look underneath that applied logo, there they are, you can start to see the usual central pinions so there's three of them there, and there's a transparent disc attached to each one of them. So each one of these hands is just moving in exactly the same way that regular hands would, but because they're mounted on transparent discs, it looks like, it looks like an illusion that they're not actually attached to the center of the watch, and they're magically 
mysteriously driving their way around the dial. Considering it's a mystery dial watch, I think it's still really legible. The hands are very big, they're thick, they actually have a little bit of loom on them, and it becomes very, very easy to tell the time on this mystery dial watch. Let's take a look at the rest of the watch. We've got a square sapphire glass on the front of the watch. Now sapphire obviously provides scratch resistance, but it's fairly unusual to see square sapphire. Typically those are circular. And this one's probably a little bit more expensive to produce because it is square versus circular. If we look at the dial, it's a very, very deep dial. It's very three dimensional. We've got applied silver hour indices with strips of superluminova loom running up the center of them and also painted on 60 uh, minute marks around this outer perimeter of the dial. These are applied to a very thin upper surface of the dial, the silver layer of the dial, and it's actually overhanging the rest of the dial. This is probably done to make room for those sapphire discs that are rotating underneath and also to hide the edges of those discs from the eye to complete that mystery dial illusion. If we look at the lower surface of the dial, we've got a very nice slight sunburst effect, that brushing that provides a very, very nice shine reflection across the dial. We can also see that we've got Zodiac Astrographic painted on the dial. The watch is automatic and we've got a date window at six o'clock. That layout is all very nice, it's pleasing, it's very symmetrical. Around that lower surface we've also got 60 minute numerals in increments of five that are painted onto that lower silver sunburst surface of the dial. We've then got four screws in that upper surface of the dial. These are probably faux screws, but they do nicely mirror the four screws that hold down the back plate of the watch. The back plate of the watch is very nice. It's deeply engraved with zodiac and astrographic. It indicates also that this watch is 100 meters water resistant. That's thanks to a screw down crown. And you can also see that this watch is a limited edition. This is model 223 out of 5,000 that will be produced. The back plate of the watch also has sapphire glass window that lets you look in at the movement of the watch. And you can see there that it's got a rather nice rotor that's signed with the Zodiac logo. The crown of the watch is really nice. It's very chunky, very big. It's got a deep engraving of the Zodiac logo on the end of it there. And also it's very tready, very knurled there. It lets you get a good grip even if you're wearing gloves. And as I said before, it's a screw down crown that helps the watch achieve that 100 meters of water resistance. So what we've got here is something that's really unusual. We've got a mystery dial watch that's also a sports watch. It's 100 meter water resistant. It's got that screw down crown. It's got a very chunky, very solid case, yet it's a mystery dial watch. This, this may be perhaps the only sports mystery dial watch being produced right now. Let's take a look at the bracelet on this watch. It's a metal bracelet. It's got a lovely satin brushed finish that matches the case of the watch. It tapers from 30 millimeters at the lugs down to 20 millimeters at the clasp. So that really helps with the, the feel of this watch. If it didn't taper like that, you would probably feel like you were wearing something really, really large around your wrist, but it does taper nicely. The links are sort of squashed barrel shaped links. They're very nicely done, very smooth, very comfortable to wear. However, the bracelet is push pins and not screws. So it makes removing and adding links and adjusting the bracelet just a a little bit more difficult. The watch has a lugless design that makes the wearing of it very, very nice. You don't have any lugs overhanging your wrist and it makes the watch feel quite a bit smaller than it actually is. The clasp on the bracelet is very nice. It's a very strong, very sturdy clasp. It's not just stamped metal. 
when you close it, it's got a very strong closing action, very secure feel to it. And it also has the additional fold over lock that has the signature of Zodiac on it that's very nicely, I believe, stamped into that uh, folding lock. The clasp also has micro adjustment so you can get very nice personalized fit with this bracelet. Let's take a look at the movement on this watch. It's an automatic movement made by STP, which stands for Swiss Technology Production. That's a company established by Fossil in 2006 in order to give Fossil a Swiss made movement. This movement is the STP 1-11 and it appears to be essentially a clone of the ETA 2824. It has a 44 hour power reserve, a quick set date function and hacking seconds, meaning that when you pull the crown out, the seconds hand does stop moving and you can set the time more precisely. It has 26 joules, a frequency of 28,800 vibrations per hour. So I guess you can think of STP movements in fossil watches a bit like ETA movements in Swatch group watches. The movement again is visible through that sapphire glass case back. It's actually quite nicely decorated. The bridges are those flat pieces of metals that you see the screws holding together. They are decorated with what's called perlage, so they've got tiny little circular patterns that are machined into them. We've also got a nicely signed rotor there with the Zodiac logo and a slight hint of snailing or brushing around that edge of the rotor. So there on the right hand side, the thing that looks like a blade, very nicely done. What about on the wrist feel? The case of the watch is 39 millimeters wide by 45 millimeters lug to lug or top to bottom. It's also 12 millimeters thick. It is pretty big on the wrist, but it wears well thanks to the lugless design and the heavily tapered bracelet. The watch is pretty hefty, but it feels comfortable and it does fit snugly. Here it is shown on my rather hairy about seven inch circumference wrist. Seven inches is about 18 centimeters. So it does not overhang the edges of my wrist. It feels quite comfortable and I don't feel that it's too big on my wrist. Now I'm gonna pair this watch with a Scotch. I'm pairing the Zodiac Astrographic with the famous Grouse. Before I get into why, Let's talk a wee bit about the Scotch. Famous Grouse has been around since 1896. I know it says 1800 on the bottle, but that's actually when Matthew Glogue and Son Limited were founded in Perth, Scotland. That is not how long that they've been producing the Famous Grouse blended Scotch whiskey. So it's been produced since 1896, but the distiller has been around since 1800. Famous Grouse is a blended Scotch whisky. That means it's made up of some less expensive or cheaper grain type whiskies, as well as a mixture of more expensive single malts. It's got a core of single malt scotches, including the Macallan and the Highland Park. All of these whiskies that go into this blend must be at least three years old and they all have to originate in Scotland. Let's take a look at the whiskey itself. First, let's smell the whiskey. It's got a lovely woody smell, maybe a slight sherry type smell because it is matured in sherry casks. A little bit of saltiness and a slight citrus smell. Let's look at the color of the whiskey. It's got a lovely light amber color. Now let's look at the legs of the whiskey. If we tilt the glass and let the whiskey flow up the sides of the glass and then check out where we let it flow to, you can just see that that liquid starts to slowly trickle back down the side of the glass. 
Those streaks of it coming back down the side of the glass are called the legs. And when you do this, it lets you see how thick the whiskey is. So checking out the legs like this just lets you see that it's, it's not a watery whiskey. It's a whiskey that's got body to it, it's matured, it's thick. Now we can taste the whiskey. I'm just sipping the whiskey. It's got a lovely, first of all, wooden taste on the palate. Very oaky, very strong wooden oakiness. A little bit of spiciness and just a little bit of a hint of smoke. So mostly woody, a little bit of spice and a little bit smoky. The finish is what we notice next. Once you've swallowed the whiskey, how does it taste? How does it feel once you've swallowed it, once it's off the palate? I would say that it becomes slightly sweet. There's a very malty taste, like a very malty beer. And it's also really smooth. Lovely smooth, fairly long lasting finish. This is a very pleasant and reasonably priced blend. It's actually the most popular scotch that's drunk in Scotland. So I think that that says a lot about it. That's really why I've paired the Astra Graphic with Famous Grouse. Both represent great value and pretty good quality. Just like the Famous Grouse, the Astra Graphic is great value and I think that it can be appreciated by those that are new to watches as well as the seasoned collector. I think it's got a little bit of something for everyone. Looking at this watch as a whole then, you're getting a really unique design that looks retro and space aged all at the same time. You're getting a really interesting way of displaying the time in its mystery dial. You're also getting a Swiss made movement that has nice, albeit machined decoration. You're also getting a lot of little details that all point toward good attention to detail and really overall excellent finishing. I think that if the Astra Graphic is representative of the models being produced by Zodiac under the Fossil Group, then they represent a really solid value proposition. I'd put them in a similar category to Tizot and Hamilton in the Swatch Group. I think that Zodiac watches have really earned a place in history, and I'm happy that a company with the resources of Fossil has revived them back to health. The watch world is all the better for it. What do you think about the Zodiac Astrographic? Let me know in the comments below, and if you enjoyed this video, do please like and subscribe.